Good morning. I am Pastor Jill Clem from Mobile United Methodist Church, and I am welcoming you this day as we worship together in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. I want to read you a scripture that always reminds me of the beautiful Black Hills and when I am here spending time with our family. It is from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. I do have a few announcements to read you this morning. Please be sure to check for updated information on our Facebook page and our weekly emails. If you are not receiving church emails and you would like to, please email us at mumchurch at wyatel.net and we will add you to our list. You will find all of our worship, story time with Pastor Jill videos on our YouTube channel under Moville United Methodist Church. We also encourage you to continue to mail in your gifts and offerings to the church office or you may set up online giving by, con by contacting Holly, our administrative secretary. You will need to fill out a form and provide a voided check. We want to make sure that we stay connected during this time. So if you are in need of anything, if you have a prayer request, please do not hesitate to contact the church office or myself. I also want to let you know that while we try to stay safe and protect each one another, we have decided to close the, the church um, from people coming in and out of it. This is a way that we can make sure that, um, that the church stays clean um, and that no one will be um, unprotected. So if you need Holly or you need myself, please call the church office or you can call my cell phone number. Um, and we would be more than happy to help you. And now as we worship together on this Pentecost Sunday, the flame of the Spirit burns in our lives, warming all in its path. Hear the Spirit calling out of God's holy wind, rising up toward the sky. The intoxicating breath of hope fills us with love. God calls us to listen to feel and to follow. And now will you join with me in our responsive call to worship. With tongues of flame, the Holy Spirit descends to burn in our hearts anew. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Like the rush of wind, we sense God's presence blowing afresh throughout the world. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Across the barriers of language and culture, Christ's message of love and grace is heard. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Divine Advocate, we seek your guidance as we search for the spirit of truth. Unite us, Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us be in an attitude of prayer. Holy One, Ignite us within us a fiery passion for your mission in the world today. Warm us by the Spirit's dancing tongues of flame that we may feel your kindling blaze within, urging us to do your greater good. Make us wholly present to experience a new birth and awaken possibilities within us to share your love in the world. In this love and abundance, we come to celebrate your harvest a harvest bearing the first fruits of the Spirit within us. Show us how to use these gifts as we listen for your truth in the gentle breeze of your Spirit. We lift up to you the names of those on our hearts who are in need of your healing mercies and comfort for their weary soul, souls, for all who are ill, who mourn, 
who are lost and alone. Help us to live the prayers we ask. Help us to be agents of healing and mercy, of peace and hope. God, in this time, we need you. Guide and direct those in leadership as they seek out the best ways to lead and protect us. We pray for those who are researching a vaccine. May you give them all the knowledge and wisdom they need. Be present with doctors, nurses, and staff as they care for patients at our hospitals. Comfort those who have lost a loved one and are feeling the heaviness of sorrow. God, in this time, we need you. Bring peace to those who are feeling overwhelmed, anxious, and afraid. Help us to be responsible and do all that we can to slow down this deadly virus. God, in this time, we need you. God, we offer our lives and prayers to you in the name of our ascended Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the, I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh God, open our hearts and minds and souls to hear your word as if it for the first time. Help us experience anew the surprise and joy that your presence in the word can bring us. Our scripture passage today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and this comes from the Common English Bible. When Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and it began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya, bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered, and some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness 
and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Our thanks be to God. My title for my message this morning is Witnessing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is fascinating to me. So many people have tried to define or describe it, but most don't quite get what it truly means. Today, I want to focus on the work of the Holy Spirit and particularly its work on that first Pentecost day. As the believers were gathered together, the presence of the Holy Spirit became evident in a very overwhelming way. The scripture tells us suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. Today, as I record this message, I am surrounded by the beauty of the Black Hills of South Dakota. One of my favorite things to do while I am in the Black Hills is to sit on the deck of our cabin and enjoy all of God's beauty and creation. And I love to hear the wind blow through the canyon just as I am hearing it blow here on the Terry Peak Summit. I love to watch the, the tops of the majestic pine trees sway back and forth, side to side. And as the wind moves through the trees, you can almost hear a beautiful melody play out. And if you listen long enough and you close your eyes, the sound of the wind may even lull you to sleep like a lullaby. But there are other times when the sound of the wind is harsh and loud and even eerie. It makes your heart beat faster and leaves an unsettling feeling inside of you. It's been told that people who have been close to a tornado say that the sound of the wind coming from the tornado sounds like a roaring freight train. And the air turbulence that can be made from the tornado, well, it can knock around a huge airplane. Now, I've had times in my life, and I'm assuming that you have too, where you have been walking outside where the wind has blown so hard that it almost knocks you over. It can take our breath away, and we can marvel at the power of wind in those particular moments. So this first initial appearance, the Holy Spirit manifested its tremendous power in the movement of the wind. The presence of the Holy Spirit touched every single person who was present in that house. People of faith from all backgrounds, languages, and nationalities experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit in a personal and powerful and life-transforming moment. During my own life, I have experienced the outpouring of the Holy Spirit during my time spent in the Black Hills, or by a lake, or during a worship service, a retreat, or conference. I have felt the Holy Spirit working when I have participated in a women's retreat at the United Methodist Camp on Lake Okoboji with only 15 women present. But I've also experienced it when I've attended a women's conference surrounded by 3,000 other women in a large arena. The best parts of these experiences are the love, peace, joy, and unity felt among those who were participating. Whether it was a small event or a large event, the presence of the Holy Spirit was evident. In those precious moments, women were greatly blessed with the profound sense of forgiveness, of hope, healing, and reconciliation, resulting in blessing after blessing. For myself, the most exciting and interesting work of the Holy Spirit on that Pentecost day is how it enabled the people present to speak 
in different languages so that those non-Aramaic speaking people could understand the message. The Holy Spirit broke all kinds of barriers that day. It freed the gospel to be universe, to be a universal message of hope and salvation to all people. And throughout the Psalms, we discover a vision of God as the God of all nations, of all people, and of all that inhabits the earth. We find it in the words of Psalm 67, let God grant us grace and bless us. Let God make his face shine upon us so that your way becomes known on earth, so that your salvation becomes known among all nations. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. Let the people celebrate and shout with joy because you judge the nations fairly and guide all nations on the earth. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. The, the earth has yieldest its harvest. God blesses us. Our God blesses us. Let God continue to bless us. Let, all, let the far ends of the earth honor him. And we find this same theme throughout the prophets, especially in Isaiah chapter two, verses two through four. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains. It will be lifted above the hills and people will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, come, let's go up to the Lord's mountain, to the house of Jacob's God, so that, we may teach, so that he may teach us his ways and we may walk in God's paths. Instruction will come from Zion, the Lord's word from Jerusalem, God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations. Then they will beat their swords into iron plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. And Jesus shows us in the way that he repeatedly reached out to the marginalized, the poor and the sick the social rejects, women and foreigners, military and non-military, sinners, the religious and the wealthy. Jesus' closing words before his ascension are that his followers are to go to all the nations of the world to baptize and to preach in his name. The Holy Spirit gave Jesus' followers the power to carry out the commandment to baptize and preach in his name to all people. I once read a story about a young man from Nepal. Nepal is a tiny country whose border with Tibet sits Mount Everest. The young man had been raised a Hindu and he believed in many different gods. But while he was attending college in the United States, another student shared with him about Jesus. The young man was so intrigued that he got a Bible for himself and he began reading about this man who he had learned about named Jesus. Well, soon he encountered the living Christ and he became a Christian. He joined a Christian fellowship group and for the first time in his life, he felt forgiven and he felt redeemed. He left a life of confusion and uncertainty for a life of assurance, of hope, of faith, and of love. He began a new life, a life that was based on the living Christ. But this new life and this belief in Jesus, well, it put him in danger. Nepal didn't allow Christians to worship openly, and his family, who were Hindus, well, they ostracized him. And yet, his faith in Jesus Christ grew stronger and larger. Well, several years later, the government changed and Christians could finally worship openly. And over time, his family became Christians also. And that young man who was so intrigued after hearing about Jesus became the headmaster of a small Christian college where he joyfully serves Christ. 
How could a young man from Nepal hear about Jesus, become a convert to Christianity, and then become a headmaster in a Christian college? Well, it happened because of the movement and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led another student to share about Jesus, to this young man from Nepal, to be so touched by its message that he was led to get a Bible, to read and to learn about Jesus. We all have this same opportunity to experience the Holy Spirit, to experience the presence and the power when we worship in the sacraments of baptism, of holy communion, in prayer and Bible study, in mission, in outreach, service work, and in whatever activity that opens not only our hearts, but also our minds into the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is present in times of personal suffering and in death. God sends us the Holy Spirit in those moments to comfort us and to give us courage and faith and the power we need to deal with the circumstances, the sufferings, the challenges, and in those times of grief. The Holy Spirit helps us experience God's presence and gives us the power to be faithful followers of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God's way of staying in touch daily with his people as they share the good news of Jesus Christ in word and in actions. The whole world can rejoice in the hope that God's love in Jesus Christ is also for them. The Holy Spirit works mightily toward that end. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, I pray that we may all have open hearts and open minds to the presence and to the movement of the mighty wind of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. And now will you join with me in our prayer of confession. Heavenly Father, you dwell within us in sighs too deep for words, yet we cannot hear you. Caring Mother, you wrap us tenderly in fierce love. You give us the breath of life, yet we cannot touch you. Brother Jesus, we yearn for your presence. We seek your abundant grace, yet we cannot feel it. Sister Spirit, you prepare to sear our souls for your purpose, yet we allow our somber selves to intrude, shutting our minds to your power. Remind us, we pray, that we need only trust in the giver of life to find the hope and faith you have promised. Gather us up in the winds of your favor and carry us to even to ever greater heights. Through Christ who loves us still, amen. And now let us confess our sins silently. Hear these words of assurance. Do not be afraid. Our comforter and advocate has come. Rejoice in the knowledge that all is forgiven. People of the Spirit, listen. The wind that drives the heavens, the wind that soars above and beyond us all, unifies us in God's love. Keep the Spirit's flame alight within your heart. Await the new birth in Christ that is promised to all. Before I give our blessing, I want to again thank you for joining me for our Sunday worship service here in the beautiful hills of the Black Hills of South Dakota. I hope that you have a glorious day 
filled with God's blessings and the hope of a beautiful tomorrow. Go forth now as Pentecost people, filled with the Spirit, dreaming dreams and seeing visions of God's possibilities. Go forth knowing that you are loved and blessed by a God who never leaves us alone. Go to be surprised, surprised by the Spirit in all that you do and everywhere that you go. Go, claiming your identity as Pentecostal people, people of wind and fire, dreams and visions, people filled with that most amazing and transforming Spirit. Amen.